you're on. Okay, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good. Okay, let's uh, let's just begin by asking God's blessing in prayer. Our Lord God in heaven, we come before you to praise and to honour your name and to give you our thanks for the blessings that you've granted to us. We thank you for our time together this afternoon, the opportunity to open your word and to read the things that you have revealed. We ask that you will be with us and bless us, that we might be instructed in the things of your ways and your purpose, so that we might direct our lives to preparing for the coming of your Son. So be with us now, we pray, as we come to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so those of us that were here last week were talking about the kingdom of God. So we're going to continue with that topic. And I'm going to start by talking about some promises that God made to King David. David was a famous king of the nation of Israel. And when we read about Jesus Christ in the New Testament, then the New Testament points out that Jesus Christ descended from the family of David. Because his mother was from that family. So in the second book of Samuel, in chapter 7, then God makes promises to King David. <laughs> so, Second Samuel chapter seven. Can we read from verse twelve down to verse sixteen? Do one Samuel, Father, half a year. That was that of Shuns, that who I get. Michelle. Who should it be? آنگاه که روزهای اون رفت به سرایت و نزد پدران خود به یارامی کسی را که از نسل تو و پالتنت باشد پس از تو برخواهم اخراشت و سلطنتش را سوار خواهم ساخت اوست که برای ما منان خانهی بنا خواهد کرد و من تخت پادشاهی او را تا به عبد و سوار خواهم ساخت من او را پدر خواهم بود و او مرا پسر چون خطا برزد او را با لحصای آدمیان به تازیانه های بنی آدم عدب خواهم کرد اما محبت من از او دور نخواهد شد چنان که آن را از شاهر دور کردم و او را از برابر تو برگرفتم خاندان پادشاهی تو تا عبد نزد من پایدار خواهد بود و تخت سرطنت جاودانه استوار خواهد ماند پس ناتان مطابق تمامی این سخنان و این رویا با داوود سخن بود so, so God said to David that he would establish his kingdom forever. Let me just say, Mina, that if they have a question, they can interrupt me. They don't have to wait till the end. No problem. Okay. So, so here God is making a promise that He will establish David's kingdom forever. And he says that somebody from David's family will rule over that kingdom. 
در آینده قرار پادشاهی رو ادامه بده و پاورش کنه and he says that the person he is talking about would be a special person. Because that person would be from the family of David, but would also be the son of God. این شخص یکی از خاندان داوود و همچنین یک پسر خدا حساب میشه. So, so we understand that the promise is about Jesus Christ. Uh, God was saying that through the work of Jesus Christ, he would establish David's kingdom. Uh, and that Jesus Christ, therefore, will rule over that kingdom. قانونی بنا شده از پادشاهی خدا. He will sit on David's throne. و قرار بر تخت پادشاهی داوود بنشینه. David's throne was in the city of Jerusalem. و تخت پادشاهی داوود در اسرائیل بوده. اورشلیم. So we are established we are expecting the government of God's kingdom to be established in Jerusalem. و ما به این نتیجه می رسیم که پادشاهی خدا در زمان داوود در قرار در آینده در اورشلیم پا بر جا بشه. میریم در عهد جدید انجیل لوقا باب یک 1330 Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1, yeah. Just to make the connection between the Old and the New Testament. <clears throat> Luke chapter 1, verses 30, 31 and 32. Bob 1, verses اینک آب سر شده پسری خواهی, خواهی زایی و نامش را ایسا خواهی نهاد او بزرگ خواهد بود و پسر خدای متعال خانده خواهد شد خداوند خدا تخت پادشاهی پدرش تا او را به او عطا خواهد فرمید yeah, so Those verses are an angel talking to Mary about the birth of her son این تو این دو تا آیه یک فرشته داره با مریم صحبت میکنه در مورد پسرش saying that he it was to be called Jesus که به عیسی مسیح نامیده میشه and that God was going to give him the throne of David's kingdom و خدا اون قول داده که پادشاهی داوود رو به عیسی خواهد داد so the New Testament is telling us that those promises from the Old Testament were about Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, we have the book of Psalms. And one of the last psalms that David wrote was Psalm 72. Uh, David wrote many of the psalms in the book of Psalms. And Psalm 72 is a prayer. و باب هفتاد و دو یک دعا به حساب میاد and it's a prayer about the promises that God had made to him و این آیه یک این این دعاهایی که خدا برای داوود به داوود گفته 
so we can read Psalm 72, verse 1 and 2. Bob 72, Mazamir, Aye Yekvado. خدایا ادارت خود را به پادشاه عطا فرما و انصاف خیش را به ولیعت تا او قوم تو را به انصاف داوری کند و ستم دیدیگان تو را به ادارت در دعایی میکنه برای پسرش که قراره به پادشاهی برسد and so he's praying for the time of God's kingdom to come. And he's telling us some of the things that he understands about God's kingdom. And it starts with a king who will rule and judge justly. و در مورد پادشاهی داره صحبت میکنه کسی که به ولیعهدی میرسه انصاف داره و به درستی عدالت و رعایت میکنه. We live in a world where there is not much justice. در دنیای داریم زندگی میکنیم که متاسفانه عدالت خاصی وجود نداره. In many parts of the world then people with power use it for themselves. در قسمت هایی از جهان هستش که الان مردم از قدرتشون دارن برای خودشون استفاده میکنن But because this is going to be the kingdom of God به خاطر اینکه این یه پادشاهی برای خداونده Then it starts from a king who is righteous, who does what is right و این با شخصی که حق شخصی که به درستی میتونه اون عدالت رو باورجا کنه قرار پادشاهی کنه. A world in which God's standards govern the things that happen. و این به صورت منصفانه به درستی تو راههای مختلف قرار انجام بشه. And because there is justice there will also be peace. به خاطر اینکه عدالت ممکنه به صلح هم برقرار بشه. If we read verse 3 <laughs> So it's using picture language because it's talking about mountains and hills تصویر جمله نشون میده در مورد کوه ها و تپه ها صحبت میکنه. The Bible sometimes use, uses the picture of mountains and hills to represent different countries. کتاب مقدس بارها در مورد کوه ها و تپه ها در مورد کشورهای مختلف اشاره کرده صحبت کرده. And here it says, yeah, the mountains will bring peace. The کوه ها قرار صلح و نعمت رو بیاره. Yeah. So that because of the justice and the righteousness in the world, there will be peace between the different parts of the world. So again, we live in a world where man's bad behavior often brings conflict. Yeah. But the kingdom of God will bring peace to the earth. One of the ways that the Bible talks about Jesus Christ is as the Prince of Peace. And with justice and peace in the world, many other problems will be solved. So, for example, we could read verse 16. Oyeyeshunzda. Tu haminan, tu hamin bab. So that 
you know, instead of people in some parts of the world struggling to find enough food. In the time of the kingdom of God, there will be plenty of food. The world will be very fruitful. Yeah, so much so that there will even be a little corn growing in the mountains. Uh, so fruitful that there will even be a little corn growing in the mountains. So you can see again that all the detail about the kingdom of God it is about things happening on earth. Yeah, because as we've said in our previous classes, then God's purpose and God's kingdom is all about the use of the earth. و در کلاس قبلی که هفته گذشته ما صحبت می‌کردیم هدف خدا اینه که پادشاهی خدا بر روی زمین برقرار کنه. و میتونیم بریم تو کتاب اشعیا. Isaiah's prophecy has many pictures about the kingdom of God. که اطلاعات زیادی تصویرهای زیادی در مورد پادشاهی خدا داره. 872. Yeah, we'll start with Bob and so let's uh, take uh, verses two and three. که کو خانه خداوند بالاتر از تمامی کوه ها استوار خواهد گردید و فراتر از تپه ها برخراشته خواهد شد و تمامی قوم ها به سوی آن روان خواهند گشت قوم های بسیار آمده خواهند گفت بیایید به کوه خداوند برویم و به خانه خدای یعقوب براییم تا راه های خود را به ما تعلیم دهد و در طریق های وی گام برداریم زیرا شریعت از صحیون Thank you. So in verse 2, it talks about the mountain of God's house. And that is a, is a one way that the Old Testament talks about God's temple. این یک راهیه که در عهد عتیق در مورد معبد خدا صحبت میکنه. In the Old Testament, Solomon, the son of David, built a temple for God in Jerusalem. در عهد عتیق اشاره کرده در مورد خانه خدا. And, and yeah, that temple was destroyed when the kingdom of Israel was destroyed and taken into captivity. But, but this says, well, one day there will be again a temple in Jerusalem. و در این آیه داره میگه یک زم... یک روزی قرار خانه خدا در بالای کوه در اورشلیم دوباره برقرار بشه. And it will be given more honor than other places. و این یک اشاره اشاره به درستی بودن اون توی مکان درسته. So that with Jerusalem as the capital of the world and Jesus Christ the king وقتی که اورشلیم پایتخت یک پادشاهی و عیسی مسیح پادشاه اونجاست then people from all over the world will be moving to Jerusalem. و تمام مردمان از تمام سراسر جهان قرار رو ببرن به سمت اورشلیم. and they'll be going there in order to be taught about the ways of God. و اینا به راهی در مورد مسیح رو درست راه خدا داره صحبت میکنه. and to worship God in the temple that's been built. 
که در ارتباط با خدا در مکانی که به عنوان معبد خدا قرار گرفته داره میگه So we're building on that picture of Jerusalem as the capital. And that city playing a central role for the instruction of the nations of the earth. And they, we can read verse 4. او در میان ملل, ملل داوری خواهد کرد و منازعات قوم های بسیار را فیصل خواهد داد ایشان شمشیرهای خود را برای ساختن گاواهن خواهند شکست و نیزه های خیش را برای تهیه ابزار باغبانی دیگر قومی بر قوم شمشیر نخواهد, نخواهد کشید و جنگ آوری را دیگر نخواهید آموخت ای نخواهند آموخت ای خاندان یعقوب بسته بپرسی که از کسی سالی نو پرابلم سوال که دیگه یه عده محدود میمونن دیگه تو جهان تو این حسب دیگه چی اون اضافه نمیشه بهشون درسته همین رو خاطر بمونیم بله دیگه نمیشه دیگه یه عده خاصن که تو آخر میمونن این Uh, it just uh, limited people or they stay that level or they, it can be changed, it can be increased or de- decreased. Okay, so let me, uh, let me use my pen that I broke. It's better, yeah. I don't know. Right, so yeah, in, in the world today, Yeah, we have rulers. Rulers, people in government, people in power. It's mean, uh, yeah, I'm trying to say English. Uh, and then we have the ordinary people. Now, today, So today, in our world, everybody is mortal. Okay. Whether we're a ruler or whether we're an ordinary person, then we are mortal. We're going to die. Right. We can also add in the king. Because in the kingdom of God, there will only be one king. We're talking about the kingdom of God. And in the kingdom of God, The king will be Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ lives forever. Yeah, following his resurrection, God has given him eternal life. Now, In the kingdom of God, the rulers will also be immortal. Yeah. But the people will, will still be mortal. Okay. So we can look at some verses. May uh, I ask a question? Mm-hmm. Who is rural in the king of the king of the God? Kingdom of God, yes. Yeah. So the king is Jesus. is Jesus Christ. The rulers, yeah, are the people who have been made immortal when Jesus returns. 
اوکی حاکمایی که تو زمان پادشاهی خدا هستند کسایی هستند که عیسی مسیح رو قبول کردن و دوباره زنده شدن و همون ایمانشون رو دارن پس اونا جاویدان میمونن so some of them will be faithful believers who are alive when Jesus Christ returns بعضی ها هستن که ایمان دارن هنوز وقتی که عیسی مسیح برگشته and some of them will be people who Jesus Christ has raised from the dead و بعضی هم ممکن هم که زمانی باشه که عیسی مسیح اومده ولی مردن از مرگ دوباره برمیگردن. But there will still be mortal people living in the earth. ولی به عنوان مردمانی که فانی هستن در زمین زندگی میکنن فعلا. These are the um, Yeah, some of the people who are alive when Jesus returns who have no knowledge of the teaching of the Bible and they and their families will enter the kingdom of God as the people who are ruled by Jesus Christ and the believers. Okay. So we can look at some verses in a minute that talk about that. Let me put another line in here. No. So, so here we get the return of Jesus Christ. To establish the kingdom of God. It's a very good pen. And the first thing that Jesus does is raise the dead. So we have the resurrection and those who are accepted at the resurrection become immortal rulers. در پادشاه خدا میمونن کسایی که همون عیسی مسیح رو قبول کردن گفته yeah. میشه کسایی که به عیسی مسیح ایمان دارن و ایمانشون رو حفظ کردن و دوباره از مرگ برمیگردن در یه دوره از زمان then there is another resurrection a second resurrection دومین قیامت بهش دومین انقلاب رو بهش میگن uh, that resurrection is for the mortal people who have lived and died during the kingdom of God در دومین So that after a certain point, everybody who is left is immortal. So the Bible gives us a lot of detail about this period. It doesn't give us as much detail about what happens here. But we, during this period, then you know, those who have been made immortal will be ruling and teaching the mortal people. تو رسانیز اول بیشتر در مورد تمام جابدانه ها تلاش میکنن که کتاب مقدس رو به کسایی که فانی کسایی که ممکنه بمیرن یاد بدن. So where 
Isaiah chapter 2 was talking about nations coming up to Jerusalem to worship God. وقتی که درش یا باب دو داره میگه که تعدادی از مردم به اورشلیم میرن تا بتونن در مورد خدا اطلاعات کسب کنن یاد بگیرن. And to learn about the ways of God. و در مورد مسیر راه خدا به دست آوردن مسیر خدا یاد بگیرن چیزی. And that's mortal people who are coming up to Jerusalem to be taught about God. پس انسان های فانی میرن به سمت اورشلیم تا از کسی که جاودانه اند در مورد خدا یاد بگیرن. Yeah, the immortal people won't need to be taught. So, uh, پس کسایی که جواب دادن دیگه نیازی به یادگیری ندارن در کل خودشون میدونن اطلاعات دارن yeah, they already know all about God اونا کلا در مورد خدا میدونن اطلاعات دارن and they'll be doing the teaching of the mortal people کارشون اینه که فقط درس بدن به کسایی که فانی ان yeah so we go from a situation of today's world where everybody is mortal uh, و در مورد امروز که همه به صورت فانی ان to, to the kingdom of God where some people are immortal and many people are still mortal. As a step towards the situation that we finish with where everybody who is left in the earth is immortal. و که در رستاخیز دوم داره در کتاب میگه که بیش... کسایی که به اون رستاخیز میرن همه شون جاب دارن یعنی کسی به عنوان فانی نداریم ما مذهب اینه که من یه محدود میشم دیگه آدم ها دیگه بعد از رستاخیز دوم دیگه یه خاص که آدم سال میره هستن همین فقط میمونم دیگه کم و زیاد نمیشم دیگه نه کم و زیاد شده نمیخواستم سال کنم نه کم و زیاد وقتی که از رست... به رستاخیز دوم میرن همه ثابتن. اما تو رستاقیز اول ممکنه بمونه قبول کنن ایمان بیارن ایمان نگه این که تو رستاقیز اول هستن اونایی که مسیحی هم یا مسیحی شده هم جفتش هست ولی میپرسن برای Who is still in the resurrection best? They are all believer or not? Yeah. Okay. So the Bible, the Bible has, a, has a, an important principle uh, and that principle is that knowledge knowledge brings responsibility yeah. Knowledge brings responsibility. So, all of us are part of God's creation. Yeah, the lives that we live, lead, the lives that we lead, are a gift from God. زندگی که ما ما رو در راهنمایی میکنه برای زندگی کردن همش از خدا میرسه به ما. And as God's creatures, we all have a moral responsibility to do what God wants. But those who in the course of their lives obtain a larger knowledge about God's ways and God's purpose, کسانی در دوره زندگی خودشون اطلاعاتی دانش زیادی نسبت به خدا دارن کسب میکنن by gaining a, a knowledge of the teaching of the bible با چیزایی که از کتاب مقدس یاد میگیرن have a greater responsibility دارای بیشترین مسئولیت پذیری هستن so the more knowledge we have then the more responsible we are. پس یعنی اینکه وقتی علم بیشتری ما کسب می‌کنیم مسئولیتمون هم بیشتر میشه نسبت به قبال اون علم. So if somebody lives their life and they never have an understanding of what the Bible really teaches. اگه کسی تو زندگیش در با کتاب مقدس روبرو نشده باشه و متوجه نشه که در مورد خدا چی میگن then they will die. ممکنه بمیره. And that will be the end for them. و ممکنه پا، پایان به یعنی آخرش باشه یعنی هیچ دوباره برنگرده به زندگی ادامش ادامه دار 
they'll have lived their life as a gift from God, but when it ends, that's all that it is. Uh, they, they will have lived their life as a gift from God, but when it comes to an end, there's nothing else. خب اونا یه هدیه از طرف خدا دریافت کردن که همین الان دارن زندگی میکنن ولی بعد از این زندگیشون دیگه چیزی کس نمیکنن. those who have a greater knowledge have a greater responsibility. کسایی که بیشتری دانش دارن پس کسایی هستند که بیشتری مسئولیت پذیری هم قبول میکنن. So those are the people who will be raised from the dead. Yeah. Because because they have a greater responsibility, they have to answer to Jesus Christ for what they have done with the opportunity that they gained. وقتی که تو رساله اول برمیگردن زنده میشن مرده ها اونجا باید در مقابل عیسی مسیح در مورد مسئولیت و اون دانشی که کسب کردن توضیح بدن که آیا اینا قبول دارن یا قبول ندارن those that have responded in faith and have tried to live as the bible describes و در اون مرحله در مورد ایمانی که دارن توضیح میدن و در مورد مسئولیت هایی که در قبالشون بود انجام دادن توضیح میدن will be accepted by Jesus Christ و باید توسط عیسی مسیح قابل قبول باشد and they will be given eternal life to become rulers و در اون زمان توسط عیسی مسیح ممکنه به کسایی که جاودانه هن برگردن Those who are refused by Jesus Christ because they didn't show faith. Well, we'll see Jesus Christ and the believers beginning to establish God's kingdom. پادشاهی خدا توسط کسایی که به عیسی مسیح اعتقاد دارن به وجود اومده و فرصت هایی که بهشون داده شده وجود داشته و به خاطر اینکه دین ایمان کافی نداشتن و اون فرصت ها رو از دست دادن ممکنه بمیرن و دیگه زنده نشن But these people are the people who were alive when Jesus returned and did not have responsibility because they never had a full understanding of the teaching of the Bible. کسایی که فانیان کسایی هستن که اطلاعات کافی در مورد دین و عیسی مسیح نداشتن اما زنده بودن وقتی که عیسی مسیح برگشت. And so they will enter the kingdom they and their families as mortal people. And during the kingdom of God they will be instructed. So that anybody living in the time when Jesus is king will gain responsibility because they'll be taught so they'll have responsibility. کسایی که در اون زمان به عنوان فانی هستن مسئولیت ها، مسئولیت که توسط عیسی مسیح به اونا گفته میشه تا به که به دین ایمان بیارن باید اون مسئولیت ها رو قبول کنن اگه میخوان به رستاخیز دوم برن so that will see all these people raised at a certain point at the second resurrection و همونطور که گفتم کسایی که به عنوان فانی هم که ایمان دار میشن تبدیل میشن به کسایی که جاب دانن توی رستاخیز دوم yeah. میرا 
میمیرن یا نه میمیرن تو فارسی کنیم؟ این کتاب نبودی کتاب خودی که به اون روز دادن آها آها این شفته قد بیردن ادبیات میگیستم و در اون So you've got people who have heard the, two, the true teaching of the Bible. Uh, and some of them have believed. And some of them have not believed. و کسایی هستن که باور نکردن و ایمان نهی بردن and then you've got the group of people who have not heard و یه سری از مردم هستن که کلن نشنیدن right. so yeah. if they die before Jesus returns اگه بمیرن قبل از اینکه ایسا مسیح بیاد yeah, if they die before the kingdom مرگ قبل از بادشاهی خدا then the people who have not heard will stay dead. But both of these groups will be raised. These will be the believers are raised to life, to, to live forever. کسایی که ایمان دارن برای همیشه زنده میشن و زندگی میکنن and those who have not believed are really raised to death they're going to die again after they've answered for the knowledge that they have وقتی که در مورد جب... وقتی که جواب گو شدن در مورد ایمانشون در زمان پادشای خدا اگه ایمان نیارن میمیرن so then you get to the time of the kingdom I think my idea is getting worse though. No, yeah. All right. so, so these people are now the rulers. These people you know, have finished, their opportunity is gone. But you have some people who have not heard but are living when Jesus returns. Yeah. And these people then become the mortal population of the earth. Yeah. And because Jesus is the king, then they will have knowledge of God's ways and purpose. Yeah. And at a certain point, there will be a resurrection for these people who have died during the kingdom of God. The first resurrection. Or the second resurrection. resurrection. And the same as here, yeah, the first resurrection. The the same as here, yeah, those that have believed will be accepted and given eternal life. Those that did not believe will die again forever. But there will be yeah, many more believers at the end of the period where Christ has been ruling. تو رستاخیز دوم به تعداد خیلی زیادی ایماندار هستن که دارن در اون زمان زندگی میکنن 
you could say that it's more difficult for us. Because we live in a world where men are ruling and there is a lot of wickedness. و در دنیای در زندگی می کنیم که به شدت ممکنه نقطه ضعف داشته باشیم و حاکمانی دارن بر ما حکمرانی میکنن. There's a lot of temptation to do the wrong thing. و خیلی چیزهایی هستن که باعث میشه ما تبد اتفاق چیزهایی اتفاق میفته که باعث میشه ما تمرکزمون رو دست بدیم از ایمان دست بکشیم. But for those who believe during this more difficult time of man's rule, then they have the extra blessing of being a ruler in the kingdom of God. ایمان بیشتری دارم و خدا مورد قبول تر برای خدا هم. It will be easier to believe in the kingdom of God when Jesus Christ is already king. خیلی راحت تر موقعی که ایسا مسیح برگشته و برای کسایی که بخوان ایمان بیارن در اون زمان. So there will be many more believers at the end of this period. و ممکنه خیلی تعداد ایمان داره بالا تر باشه موقعی که زمان پادشایی خدا باشه و ایسا برگشته باشه. But you know, there won't be rulers because by the time we get to the second resurrection, you know, everybody remaining will be in the same condition. Yeah. So you know, really there are you know there are three types of people. Yeah. Those who have heard and those who have not heard and those who have heard have to split into two types those who hear and believe and those who hear and don't believe because there is this as I said before this important principle knowledge brings responsibility به خاطر همون پیامی که گفتم علم مسئولیت زیادی به خود داره okay. کامل مشخص شد داره Good. Right, so we were looking at Isaiah 2. Yeah, and we were saying that the nations that are coming up to be taught in Jerusalem and to worship in Jerusalem. Are the mortal people. Because they're the ones that still need to learn. And they will be ruled over by the immortal believers. And I think we've read verse 4. And verse 4 again shows us that you know, the kingdom of God will be a time of peace. این آیه نشون میده پادشاهی خدا یک جایی برای صلح و آرامش because Jesus Christ and the believers who have been made immortal are ruling and judging که عیسی مسیح و کسایی که ایماندار هستن جاودان کسایی هستن که جاودانگان ساختن و آرامش و صلح برقرار میکنن then yeah, there won't be the opportunity for warfare and for conflict و ممکنه جایی برای انصاف و قضاوت و عدالت باشه. And this verse describes the equipment that is used for war being turned into equipment for agriculture. که تو این آیه داره در مورد جنگ های جنگ هایی که نخواهند داشت جنگ‌آوری میگن نخواهند آموخت یعنی برای جنگ کاری نخواهند کرد. 
Yeah. So that instead of uh, instead of directing their lives towards violence, then people will be directing their lives towards peaceful pursuits. Okay. مستقیما در مورد کس با عنوان خشونت ها که قبلا داشتن دیگه هیچ خشونتی در اون دوران به وجود نخواهد اومد. Yeah. Instead of uh, Mr. Putin sending his tanks into the fields of Ukraine. ممکنه که پوتین رئیس جمهور روسیه تانکس یعنی قدانیش رو به اوکراینیا بفرسته. Yeah, if there are any tanks left, they'll be turning them into tractors to work those fields. Okay, let's go on to Isaiah chapter 11. And... Uh, Let's start with verse 1. Do you want the Bible? Thank you. 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 So, yeah, this is, this is talking about um, a tree that has been cut down. Starting to shoot again. Uh, and it says that this tree that is beginning to shoot again is the tree of Jesse. Uh, <coughs> Jesse was the father of King David. Uh, so this really is saying that you know the royal family of Israel that was brought to an end is going to start growing again and, and it's talking about you know one particular descendant from the family of David تقریبا در مورد یک قرن بعد از داوود داره صحبت می‌کنه. که دوباره داره این پیش‌بینی نشون دهنده عیسی مسیحه. Now, and then, you know, read um, about him ruling as king in verses 2, 3 and 4. روح خداوند بر او قرار خواهد یافت. روح حکمت و فهم روح مشورت روح مشورت و قوت روح معرفت و ترس خداوند و لذت او در ترس خداوند خواهد بود بر حسب آنچه به چشم بیند داوری نخواهد کرد و بر وقت آنچه به گوش شنود حکم نخواهد داد بلکه بینوایان را به ادالت داوری خواهد کرد و برای ستم دیدگان زمین به انصاف حکم خواهد داد جهان را به اصای دهانش خواهد زد و شریران را به نفس لبهایش خواهد خواهد کشت Yeah, so you've got the picture of Jesus Christ as a just and righteous ruler. <coughs> and having the power of God to rule the earth as God wants. So that when you know, wicked men try and resist the rule of Jesus at his return, then they won't succeed, that he will use power to ensure that he takes over and establishes God's kingdom. 
و به خاطر اینکه ایس... موقعی که ایسا مسیح برمیگرده و اون رو ایسا مسیح رو میبینه به خاطر ترسی که داره عقب میکشه و به خاطر پادشاهی خود موفقیت آمیز میشه براش And he'll be ruling in a way that brings justice to the earth. Yeah. It's not a world where powerful people oppress other people, uh, but a world where there is genuine justice. مثل الان نیستش که حاکم ها فقط با قدرتشون به مردمان ضعیف زور بگن بلکه همشون ادالت رو برقرار میکنن And so, you know, again, the picture is of a world of peace and a world in harmony. We can read verse 6. فرواری با هم به سر خواهند برد و کودک پرسار آنها را هدایت خواهد کرد. Yeah, so داره از حیواناتی اشاره میکنه که برخلاف هم هستن و داره همون نشونه سال رو میده so we can also you know, see it as a, as a symbolic picture of all the countries of the world in harmony together که این تصویرهای کشورهای مختلف رو داره اشاره میکنه که ممکنه کشورهای مختلفی با هم مشکل دارن در اون زمان به سال میرسن and it's a, a time of healing و یک زمان داره شفا بخشیه We go on to Isaiah chapter 35. Verses 5 and 6. Verses 5 and 6. Verses 5 and 6. Verses 5 and 6. و گوشهای ناشنوایان باز خواهد گشت آنگاه لنگان چون غذار جست و خیز خواهند کرد و زبان گنگ شادمان خواهد سرایی آبها در بیابان سیلان خواهد کرد سیلان خواهد کرد و نرها در صحرا خواهد جوشید So during his ministry you know, Jesus Christ he ruled some of the people that he met در اون زمان ایسان مسیح در زمان خودش های خود ایسان مسیح کسایی شفا میده که صدمه دیدن And that was to give an anticipation of what the kingdom of God would be like A foretaste to see in advance what the kingdom of God would be like و این داره نشون میده یه سری از توصیح هایی که خودش های خدا به چشک خواهد بود And you know, for the Jews who knew their Bibles to be asked to recognize him as their king. Sickness and disease are part of our mortality. And you know, we trace our mortality all the way back to the time of Adam and the introduction of sin to the world. When you know, Jesus Christ has done the work of the kingdom of God, there won't be any more mortality because everybody left will be immortal. در زمان پادشاهی خدا دیگه کسای فانی زیاد نیستن چون همشون تبدیل میشن به کسایی که جاب دانن And in the time of God's kingdom when Jesus is ruling the effects of sin and mortality will be reduced و کسایی که به عنوان کسایی که مریضی و ایماندار نیستن مریضی دارن و مثل همین آیه که گفته مثلا ناشنوایان لنگانن دیگه اون زمان خیلی کم میشه Um, so that sickness and disability will be healed 
through the work of Jesus Christ and his followers. در زمان در زمان پادشاهی خدا عیسی مسیح کسانی که معلولیت دارن و بیماری دارن همشون رو شفا میده. And these verses are yeah, just talking about, you know, giving us a picture of that. و این آیه ها داره تصویری رو از زمان پادشاهی خدا به ما نشون میده. A couple of weeks ago we looked at uh, Isaiah 65. چند هفته پیش به اشعیا باب 65 this was the chapter that explains what the Bible means when it talks about a new heavens and a new earth. Yeah, but that language of a new heavens and a new earth means a new government for the people. بهشت جلینی هون اینجا به معنی بهشت ولی خب تو توصیف این به معنای گاورمنده و معنی دولت گفته میشه and if we look at Isaiah 65 um, verses 19 and 20 آیه 19 و 20 کسی بر بر اورشلیم شادی خواهد کرد و به سبب قوم خیش به وحشت خواهد خواهم آمد صدای گریه و ناله دیگر در آن شنیده نخواهد شد دیگر هرگز در آن کودکی نخواهد بود که چند روزی بیش زنده نماند و نه پیرمردی که عمر خود را به کمال نرساند آن که در صد سالگی بمیرد جوان محسوب گردد و آن که به صد سالگی نرسد ملعون به شمار آید Uh, so unlike the world in which we live, it will be a time without sorrow and without sadness. And again, it talks about the way in which mortality will be, you know, the, the effects of mortality will be reduced. که داره دوباره نشون میده کسایی که تاثیرات که رو کسایی که فانی هستن میذاره اونجا به شدت کاهش پیدا میکنه because it's a, if somebody dies aged 100 it will be like they're just a young person که اینجا داره نشون میده کسی که اگه در سن 100 سالگی بمیره به عنوان یک جوان در اون دوران محسوب میشه yeah. which means there still must be mortal people there که این معنی رو میده که بیشتر آدمای فانی در اونجا هستن yeah. That there are still people dying at that time. But because the world is a better place, their lives will generally be much longer than the lives of people at this time. And it talks about sinners. So again, there must be a mortal population because there are still sinners at that time. Yeah. And so, yeah, what the book of Revelation says is that this period where Jesus and the believers are ruling over the mortal nations. It is a period of a thousand years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then the boom resurrection. Yeah. So, uh, there are, I'm out of time. On <laughs> Zaman Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. I hope that was helpful. Thank you.